Let's talk about Rainbird's irrigation valve called the PGA. I'm pretty certain that the PGA stands for Plastic Globe Angle Valve. And this comes standard with both globe configuration, which means straight through flow, and also the angle configuration, which you take this off of here. You know, for other valves, you have to specify the angle. They have optional, you know, configurations for the angle, but the PGA comes standard with this. And you take off this cap from the bottom and put it into the other inlet here. The direction of flow is this way. Almost always on, on every valve, you'll see the solenoid on the outlet side of the valve. But this allows you to have an inlet coming from the bottom and goes through, which saves you a couple of PSI of pressure loss as it moves through. So this one only comes in threaded version. Although you can get a one inch version, a one and a half and a two inch version of this. And this is really considered one of their commercial versions. And I'm including it in this course because you'll see a lot of these, or at least I see a lot of the, the one inch out in the field. It's kind of considered an upgraded version. You know, if you're selling an installation, you want to sell a premium installation, you use the PGA. Even though their DV series is an incredibly good valve, this is maybe just even a little bit better. So the specifications on it are um, the, the pressure range is 15 to 150 PSI. The flow range for the one inch is two to 150 gallons per minute. But on the one and a half and the two inch models, the flow range is five to 150 um, gallons per minute. And that's a, that's quite a bit to, to move through a valve without going to a, you know, a super large size for the one inch to handle 150 gallons per minute. That that's pretty astounding. So let's talk about the solenoid here. Solenoid's a different design than the solenoid used on the DV series and they're not interchangeable. Even though this one um, has an encapsulated plunger here, you know, it won't fall out when you take it apart. If you're testing it with an ohm meter, it's going to show somewhere between 30 to 39 ohms. It takes, let's see, 410 milliamps of inrush amperage to open it up, but only 140 milliamps holding amperage to, to keep it open. And that's one of the lowest holding amperages, as far as I know, of pretty much any, you know, entry level or residential light commercial irrigation valve on the market. I think there's another one um, out there, maybe Irritrol or K-Rain that has, has a pretty low, but 140, that's pretty low as far as the, the, the holding amperage on that. Now, when you're taking this apart, you know, you've got six bolts on here that you can use either a standard flathead screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, or a 5 16 inch nut driver to take these off here. And some of the features are, you know, you can get a, a reclaimed version of this that has a purple solenoid on it. Um, that's, you know, for reclaimed or effluent water. You can also get a DC latching solenoid that works for Rainbirds, you know, TBOS, um, battery operated setup, which is their, you know, battery operated timer, Bluetooth timer. Um, I don't think that this this particular valve, the PGA, I don't think you can get it without the flow control. I'm pretty sure that all of them have a flow control on here, has a, um, a manual internal bleed. Let's see what else here. You can use Rainbird's, you know, optional PRS-D pressure regulator that you can buy separately and put on here. Remember that flow control is not the same as pressure regulation, kind of two different mechanisms there. Um, and this valve has a, a slow closing design. The diaphragm doesn't just slam shut when you turn it off and that helps you in situations if you have water hammer problems, 
that, you know, that slow closing design will help mitigate the water hammer, which can, you know, damage systems and damage other parts of water systems as well. Um, and also, you know, there's a, um, just like the other, the DV series, it has a, a filter down inside of here called a, fil a filtered pilot flow. But overall, this is a, a really good valve, and uh, let's go through a rebuild on this and see how it goes. Okay, we're going to go ahead and rebuild this PGA and take it apart and take a look at the insides of it. Okay, now as we look inside of here, just, you know, if you're taking this apart and going to use the same components, if you're just flushing it out, but as a contractor, almost always, if I have a problem with a valve, I'm going to just take a brand new valve and replace everything but the main body here that's, you know, glued in or part of the piping. So let's take the spring out. And when you take these apart, I always try to hold it in place with my finger until I take the top off, the bonnet off, to make sure that the spring doesn't shoot off into the mud or whatever. And so as we look at our diaphragm here, there's no nub, so there's no special orientation down in the body for it. Nothing really to watch out for, except for there's a little screen on the bottom piece here. And if you're going to use the same diaphragm that you're taking out, maybe have a, a cup of clean water and a toothbrush and just make sure that this is clean and that water can flow through it. And this is the seat for the diaphragm. Inspect that and make sure that there's no gashes or anything that's happened there from any grit or sand that may have passed through the valve. And one thing to watch out for this is it has a little removable O-ring here that the, um, the solenoid piece seats up against here. So make sure that you inspect it and make sure that it's okay. Look down inside of here, make sure that there's no rocks or anything that may have lodged down in there that may keep the valve from running good. And a lot of times I'll stick my finger down inside of here, just make sure that there's nothing right there in the inlet, make sure that there's nothing on this lip. So let's put it back together. Let's put our diaphragm seat back in here and make sure that it's in properly and that there's nothing kind of causing that to, you know, be up and uh, out of its original position. Put this back and make sure that the bottom lip is kind of seated down in there good. Hopefully you've rinsed this out with some water or used your toothbrush to kind of make sure that the inside seat down in here doesn't have any debris on it. Put this back together put our spring back on here. And if you see, you know, this one's pretty nice and the fact that it's got a little piece here that helps put that spring right back to where it should be. And also you want to inspect if you're using the original parts and make sure that there's no debris or anything down in the little hole here that the solenoid uses to actuate. Actually, you know, there's a little bit of um, water that moves up through here, which makes the, the solenoid operate if you've watched one of our earlier videos. But the PGA is extremely easy to rebuild. Very rarely does anything go wrong with it, and that's one of the reasons it's a very, very popular valve. So let's go ahead and put this one back together. And if you're putting this back together, you know, with a, with, with hand strength, you know, you don't have to be Hulk Hogan on this thing and crank it down on there. You know, just hand strength should be good enough just to make sure that it's seated up against here. And if you're having problems with hand strength, you know, not being enough to seal this up, then you probably got a problem with pressure that's too high. But that's the rebuild on a PGA.